Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And happy Thanksgiving to everyone watching from the United States. I hyped this video as being controversial. I may have exaggerated slightly. This new model P135 fountain pen from Moon Man is so new, there isn't a lot of controversy swirling around it yet. However, when Moon Man releases a fountain pen that is a copy of a well-known name brand like Leonardo, Parker or Stipula, controversy ensues. So I'm a bit ahead of the curve here. Perhaps that is because all of the Moon Man haters are locked out of their favorite kvetching platform, the Fountain Pen Network, which has been down for at least two weeks now and doesn't show any signs of life yet. That being said, on to the pen in question. This is the new Moon Man P135, which is, and I'm choosing my words very carefully here, an homage to the Mont Blanc 145 Le Petit Prince Douai Classique. Although Moon Man is quite capable of ripping off another pen's design right down to the details, they didn't do that here. And so, I'm using the word homage, or inspired by, instead of the word copy. I think you'll see that they've gotten quite cute in their adaptation of the Mont Blanc Little Prince cap designs. So join me and see whether this P135 for Moon Man is a ripoff of the Mont Blanc 145 Little Prince or not, right now. <laughs> And it's another new pen day here at Inquiring Minds. And what is better for a YouTube channel than a little controversy? I know I mentioned uh, in my last video last Wednesday that uh, Moon Man has been busy uh, this year copying various fountain pen companies models from Leonardo to Parker and also Moon Man lately. And I mentioned that I had a P135 on order. So, let's open it up and take a look. I don't get many of these Moon Man boxes because you don't need a lot of boxes hanging around, but sometimes it's nice to see when a new model comes to get it with the box. Let's pull that sleeve off. And we have a nice heavy cardboard Moon Man box with uh, Moon Man logo and Moon Man foil stamped on the top. Let's open it up. And there's the pen. I'll put my mic close to this. So that you ASMR fans can appreciate it. It's still condensating because it's still a little bit cold from the mailbox. But uh, may not show up on camera. But that is a deep red, om om almost black, deep maroon. The number five size nib. Seen that marking before. Very interesting. Moon Man logo on the converter. Looks like standard international. Metal threads on metal threads. And I'll give you guys eh, three guesses as to what this pen is copying. Or, in, no, I'm going to say inspired by. Because this is not like some other Moon Man pens that are dead spitting images of uh, other manufacturers. So I'll clean this pen out. And we'll get to the controversy surrounding this pen. And now that I've written with this pen for a couple of days, what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. 
After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. As I promised, I want to talk about how this Moonman is inspired by the Mont Blanc 145 Classique Le Petit Prince Douai, rather than a direct copy like this Moonman M800 is a copy of the Leonardo Momento Zero. Unlike the Leonardo in the M800, I cannot show you this Moonman P135 alongside a real Mont Blanc 145 Classique because I can't afford the roughly $1,800 Canadian sticker price to simply take one for the team for a video that might make me oh, some 10 bucks in maybe a year or so. So we'll have to look at internet fountain pen porn instead. My pen club pal Stephen Brown, who lives just an hour north of me here in Alberta, recently did a terrific video on the two versions of the Mont Blanc 145 Classique Little Prince, and I'll link that video in the description. He does some great detail on the difference between the metal version, the Mont Blanc is actually plated with platinum of course, and the resin version. This Moonman P135 is inspired by the metal version. So let's look at the metal version Mont Blanc 145 Classique here for a moment. The 145 model is called Classique, where the 146 is called Le Grande. There doesn't seem to be a name for the top of the line 149. Perhaps it should be Le Grand Guignol, but that would be horrifying, wouldn't it? The top finial has the classic Mont Blanc snowflake, and the platinum plated cap has a variety of embossings or engravings on it depicting the illustrations of the book The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint Exupéry. The side of the top finial also has an engraving of a quote from the book that says, Pour moi, vous serez unique au monde, or in English, to me, you will be unique in all the world. Forgive my French. There is actually a larger Petit Prince Mont Blanc that has a leather clad cap embossed with the Zain Exupéry illustration which includes the pilot's aircraft zooming over the desert and the little prince and his star in the sky on the body of the pen. I mention this because I will make reference to this shortly. The clip on the 145 Classique metal version has a small yellow star and then the barrel is metal with a platinum plated bullet shaped end finial. Note that the Mont Blanc Classique does not post. The section on the 145 Classique is shiny, slick platinum plate, and the nib is an 18 karat gold number no. 5 size with yet more Saint Exupéry illustrations. And the Mont Blanc is a cartridge converter pen and weighs in at 52 grams. Now let's look at the Moon Man Tribute pen. Of course, it comes in this box with this sleeve. So this is Moon Man's Mont Blanc tribute pen. I know I'm going to get mail for that remark, I think. <laughs> Moon Man has named the pen the P135. This is a Jinhao trick. Add one to the tens of the three-digit model number, and voila, a new pen. Instead of a Jinhao 149, it is the Jinhao 159. Boy, that'll throw those Westerners off. So instead of the Moon Man 145, it is the Moon Man P135. I wonder why it wasn't M135. Perhaps the P stands for Prince. Could be, maybe. But we have a pen that in outward looks and shape resembles the metal Mont Blanc 145 Classique. Let's look at the details and I'll reference the similarities and differences as we go. From the top we see a domed piece of ivory colored acrylic which I think is supposed to be transparent across the top and opaque around the sides uh, to show off the embedded piece of abalone shell on the inside but mine is all wonky. Oh my god are you okay? I don't know. I don't know. What, what does it look like? But there isn't anything close to a Mont Blanc snowflake here. Also, the edges of the finial are free of any engravings. Then there is a clip band with an attached, very sturdy clip, which has a very similar design to the Mont Blanc clip, 
but without a star. Then we come to the engraved chrome cap. I'm going to turn it slowly here to show the Moon Man illustration. I think this is very clever. There is nothing in these designs that reference anything in the book The Little Prince. However, there are enough stylized elements that make veiled reference to the Saint Exupéry illustrations. Let's go through it slowly. There are no stars and no asteroid B325 or even on asteroid P135 for that matter. But we do have a sun with a moon inside shining down in both day and night over a wavy desert or sea or sea of sand or desert of water. Take your pick. Then we have a swooping bird. We can pick out its flight path above the sandy ocean. There are some birds in the little prince, uh, which the prince harnessed to allow him to travel across space to various tiny asteroids and planets. But this swooping eagle, I think, is a veiled reference to the Saint Exupere pilot's plane as illustrated in the leather clad cap of the larger Mont Blanc Le Petit Prince. Again, very clever. It is even traveling in the same swooping direction with the same diagonal line. So the cap tapers up with all these engravings until we get to the integrated cap band, which has two frosted metal bands separating a center band that says Moo Man twice, front and back. And then the cap tapers down to the barrel. There's a very, very minimal step down to the barrel. And the barrel, which is in a deep maroon, almost black colored plastic, tapers down to a chrome-shaped bullet end finial. On the larger Mont Blanc Le Petit Prince, this is a piston knob because the leather clad model is a piston filler. The 145 Classique, however, is a cartridge converter like this one. And the 145 Classique has an enamel over a metal barrel, unlike this one, which is plastic. The cap unscrews with one and a quarter turn to reveal a tapering section with the same maroon plastic as the barrel has with a silver ring separating the section and the barrel and another flared chrome ring towards the number five size steel nib. Note that the 145 Classique has a slick metal section and a number five size 18 karat gold two-toned nib. Let's take a closer look at the nib. It has some scroll work and the Moon Man logo we've seen on some of their packaging before, but I've never seen it on a nib. It has Moon Man engraved in two words with the O's of moon intertwined and the stylized nib with a drop of ink design below. And here is the plastic feed. The nib and feed are friction fit, not part of a nib assembly collar, but easily removed for cleaning or swapping. If we look at this nib profile, we'll see a very familiar upturned tip, not unlike the Pen BBS Fine Mini Fude nib. When I selected this pen, there were two options, EF 0.4 millimeter and bent 0.58 millimeter. This is the bent nib. The section unscrews and note that even though the barrel is plastic, there is a metal insert section right here that gives you metal on metal threads. And we see the Moon Man branded included standard international cartridge converter. Now I had an odd issue with this particular pen with the cartridge converter sticking when I unscrew it and it pulls just like that and it pulls the converter out of the section and then it's uh, you gotta extract it from the barrel. I haven't had any ink spills and the converter attaches very tightly to the section so I'm guessing something on the knob end of the converter is catching inside the barrel, which pulls it off when I unscrew it. Very odd. This pen will take standard international short cartridges, but it won't accept two of them piggybacked. The cap posts deeply and securely, unlike the Mont Blanc. 
And although the metal cap does back weight the pen slightly, it's not uncomfortable to write with posted. Unposted is comfortable in the hand and just barely long enough. And that section is just slightly thinner than I would like it, but it isn't slippery at all. I found that I'm really enjoying writing with this pen posted and unposted very much. This is a bit of a surprise to me, for I really thought I would dislike this pen in the hand. This pen retails for $23.85 US, now that it has been reduced by 10% from $26.50. But I paid $32.99 for it when I pounced on it the moment it was listed. So you're lucky that you can get it for 27% less than I paid. You're welcome. I thank you. It also comes in three colors, black, dark red, and blue. Each of the colors have different patterns on the caps. These other patterns are, again, a veiled attempt to emulate the other engravings on the Mont Blanc 145s, from the little fox pattern to the star pattern. And they're using symbols and shapes that look like runes to me. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Moon Man P135 with a Twisby Classic, a Waterman Keren, a Parker Sonnet, and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. I thought I'd show some similar sized metal pens. The Twisby section is very similar to the P135, though the P135 is slightly larger in girth. The Twisby is slightly longer. And the colors are very similar, but the uh, P135 is a much deeper maroon color. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Moon Man P135, and it is a fine mini food A. steel nib. And the ink today is diamine or diamine depending on your accent. Merlot. Let's check the wetness here. You can see it is very wet. Now, I haven't done anything to this nib. This is right out of the box. Here is the swatch for the Diamine Merlot, along with Hiroshizuku Yamabuto and Robert Oster Muddy Wine. I bought this Merlot to match my Twisby Classic and I think it's a nice match for this pen as well. It's a nice ink. I like it. So this nib feels very, very familiar. Because it is that mini Fude upturned nib, very similar to the Pen BBS number six fine nib. It has the same kind of feel, and of course, I love it. And as to line variation, that's no pressure. That's pushing it a bit. Uh, I wouldn't push this nib. Uh, you get no line variation out of it whatsoever. It's very stiff. Which is typical for these steel nibs. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it comes out as 0.5 millimeters. And of course it was advertised at 0.58, but 
my micrometer doesn't go down that low but it is uh, what you would call a Western fine or a Japanese between a fine and a medium and for our quote now you're gonna to have to indulge me a bit as I'm going to write out a few lines from the little prints as they seem to be particularly appropriate here of course I'll speed all this up for some reverse writing that's very scratchy and very dry and some quick writing no problems whatsoever so I think these quotes are appropriate to our discussion of pens. St. Exupery's The Little Prince is an allegory similar in style to Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland or Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. It isn't as satirical as either Carroll or Swift's writings, but it leans more toward social observation and instruction in the way of Cahill Gilbrand's The Prophet. The first quote from The Little Prince is, if you were to say to the grown-ups, I saw a beautiful house made of rosy brick with geranium in the windows and doves on the roof. They would not be able to get any idea of that house at all. You would have to say to them, I saw a house that cost 100,000 francs. Then they would exclaim, oh, what a pretty house that is. That quote speaks to how we place more value on something the higher the price is on that item. If I told someone inexperienced in fountain pens, that this Moon Man pen cost $500, they would ooh and awe ah over it and be much more impressed than if I told them it cost $5. We've all experienced this. The second quote gets to the concept of intellectual property. It says, when you get an idea before anyone else, you take out a patent on it. It is yours. So with me, I own the starts because nobody else before me ever thought of owning them. So that does get to the heart of intellectual property, which is probably the core issue of the controversy that surrounds Moon Man with its copies of Leonardo Stipula and now Mont Blanc. There are some fascinating discussions on intellectual property that I encourage you to read if the topic engages you at all. But the interesting question to ask yourself is, if your pen is used by another person, it deprives you of your use of it. But if your idea is used by another, have you actually lost anything? So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, there's a lot to like about this pen, starting with the nib. I'm not a fan of a small nibs, but this mini fude is lovely, smooth and wet. And the pen itself is nicely balanced, posts well, and is substantial in the hand. I love the lines on the cap and the deep Merlot maroon color of the barrel and the section. I like that the section isn't a slippery piece of metal. And for what I don't like so much? Well, there are a few things. The cap is a fingerprint magnet, as you can see. If you have OCD about those kinds of things, like me, then that will bother you. 
All right, hands in the air, vertically. Both arms should be parallel to each other. You, fill this bag with clean, unmarked bills. But first, fix that notepad so it's at a right angle with the corner of your desk. And tap that pile of receipts against a flat surface so they're not sticking out haphazardly. You know what? Forget about the money. Everybody grab a broom. We are straightening this place up. And, of course, we all know that OCD stands for Our Cute Doug. And also, these engravings here are also a bit sharp to the touch. It isn't anything that would cut you but it doesn't drag as smoothly across your grip or against your skin as you'd like it. Plus, when you clip this pen on your pocket, the clip against those roughed etched lines can catch clothing. And for this particular pen, I don't like that my little abalone shell finial looks cockeyed. The fellas in our family only have to look at a woman and she's pregnant. Oh, must be because you're all cockeyed. Uh -huh. And in addition, this converter catching on the inside of the barrel it didn't do it that time might be an issue for me I might have to sand down the plastic knob on the end of the converter to keep it from catching the inside there but I really like this pen especially at twenty three dollars and eighty five cents US instead of thirty four bucks and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted and that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.